No problem. Do you hear me? Yes. Loud and clear. Loud and, and clear. Do you see my do you see my presentation? Yes. Nice. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Miguel, as, as Wilma said. Um, I work for EDF um, as a as a technologies officer. I've been part of this Akai community since I think 2008, so I've been a member for a long time. I, I'm going to share with you uh, a project that we made this year, which is the, the Unidigital. Yeah? And as the title says, it's going to present some innovations for Sakai that come from the Spanish universities and the European um, community. So first of all, I'm, I want to say thanks to the funding because these institutions made this possible. Um, the institutions work together very hard to, to, to request some funds from the European Union because the European Union um, approved some funds for the institutions um, in order to help them um, to improve the tools and, and, and improve the, the digital transformation in the organizations. So basically these organizations joined together and built a big list of, 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 of wishes for Sakai, features, ideas, all of them coming from instructors uh, that wanted to be in, in Sakai. So they work together collaborative. This was a good example of collaboration between institutions, which is a thing that makes us happy, of course. And uh, they requested the funds to the European Union. There was a public tender. So every any company can, can submit a, a bid for the for the process. And my company was a, was one of the bidders. And, and got the project in, in the last year. So first of all, I want to say thanks to, to all of them because of the huge effort they made in record time. And now I want, I want to, to talk about the challenge because this was a big challenge. So basically it was a big RFP. And it was a big, big document with, with a lot of work to do. And there was a very short uh, window for submissions. So they made a tremendous effort building the, all the documentation and all the legal uh, paperwork in order to, to present to the European Union and the Spanish government. So finally, they got the funds. And uh, of course, there was, on the other hand, a big effort from EDF because we needed to make a submission in record time for that big RFP and commit a big part of the company. Uh, because we needed to be really, really fast making the decisions. And it was, it is, it is um, a project about a quarter million euros, which is a little, bit, a little bit more in dollars. So we made the signature. So we signed the project on December 2022. And that's a big challenge. We need to complete everything before the end of the, this year because it's, um, it's one of the conditions of these European projects. So you can, you can request the funds, you have to provide the ideas. The ideas need to impact in the, in the product, Sakai in this case, and everything needs to be done before the end of this year. So at the same time, you, have, you need around six, seven, or even nine Sakai girls with experience, and it's not an easy task because People need experience in the products. They need to be Sakaigers for a long time. So it's not easy, trust me. And uh, at the same time, as I said, they grabbed many ideas from many institutions. And uh, at the end, they, the ideas come from instructors. So if you want more detail about the feats, about what needs to be done, about what, the, what they have in mind, you have, you have to hunt them. You have to contact the institutions, you have to look for them, who requested this from what building, what department, what subject, what was in, this, in, in, in their mind when they requested this feature. So it was a, a great mission because <laughs> you have to make the investigation to describe the features. And then after that, implement them uh, following the best practices because we have a, we, we're a, an open source community, 
we have a collaborative software and there's some rules that needs to be needs to be implemented so so at the end we needed to commit huge part of edf for 2023 it's a big it's a big commitment because uh, we're not a super huge company every decision we make has an impact in the company because we commit valuable resources so we committed a big part of the, the company to this project and, and build everything according to the to the expectations so at the end one of the hardest part was make everybody happy uh, make the community happy institutions happy structures happy people happy so it's a big challenge as i said so to summarize uh, Everybody has the information in this Jira ticket, the, the Jira link, which is at the bottom. But uh, this is the distribution around around the features. So most of the, the features are around the same quizzes because it's the most critical and probably the most used uh, tool in these institutions, the same quizzes. Of course, there's a big portion related to assignments and at the same time, the integrations with all of these resources. I hear noise from anybody. Somebody has noise? Yeah, I heard something. If you have your microphone on, please be sure to mute. I don't hear it anymore, so hopefully it was just a fluke. Ah, thank you. So yeah, there's a quizzes has the big the biggest part of the features. Uh, another big big part is the Office 365 integrations to make Sakai more integrated with the Office 365 technologies, the same time assignments. And other tools like private messages, announcements, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is the feature distribution. A similar way around the budget. So the budget is a quarter of the budget is is related, more than a quarter is related to Microsoft integrations to make the product more integrated with with, with Microsoft products. A big part is testing quizzes. So and, and, and finally the third part is going to the assignments. So this is basically the budget distribution. So yeah, that, that was the train. That was the challenge. That was the train. We had the money. We have very limited time. As I said, many people to talk, many people to collaborate. So that was the train. And we had the decisions to go or not go. As always, as a small company, as a team. And that was our question. Uh, who's aboard in the train? So finally, we got and we formed a team. To build all of this, the first part of the team I want to mention is, of course, the Spanish universities. We got because we couldn't make anything without them. They put a lot of effort during the process. They grabbed the requirements and they grabbed uh, the list of features uh, because they have in, they, they, they are in contact with the structures. I've been I've been coordinating um, all the all the features and and the project since it started in December. And these are the list of the developers I want to mention, Bernardo, uh, Francisco, which is Paco, uh, Marcus, Vicente, Juan David, Jesus, and also three other people supporting the processes. They are in the shadow, but they are working hard, helping us to make this happen. So I want to mention this is the team. So I have some photos of the team. So this is my, 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 my team in the company, as I said, uh, Vicente, Bernie, Paco, Marcus, we have Juan David, also Tobias, that are helping us to, to make the contributions to Master. But this is a team in the company. Uh, the team and the real team is also uh, uh, all the people from the universities that that made this possible. So in this photo, we have a, one of one picture of everybody from all the institutions in the annual meeting we had this year in Valencia. So there are representation of people from Murcia, Valencia, Lleida, and Navarra. So let's talk about the feature list. I'm gonna go fast because I I have limited time and I wanna I wanna leave time for questions. So um, all the features have an icon related to the status. So if you see like a check, green check, means that it's completed and ready for testing. And if you see a clock like that, it's because it's in progress. So, and if you see nothing, it's because we didn't start it. So there's opportunity to, to participate in the discussions. So basically, uh, the features for assignment are almost completed, except the PASAM. We have the rubrics available um, 
in the peer review assignments, and it also incorporates other modes like self-report, where the students can report themselves uh, in a rubric. Um, Basam is a peer assessment and monitoring system. is a, a way of grading based on comparison. It's an external system, and we're going to provide details um, soon because we, we, we are continuing working on this uh, these weeks. We're having the meetings with the, with the people that develop Basam. Also, uh, this is for students, the ability to display the grades in the assignment list is completed. We also included support for tags. So now the assignments can be tagged and you can sort and filter by tags. Uh, and finally, the ability to assign the assignments to the, to, the, to the groups, to the structured groups by default, which saves many clicks. And now it wasn't possible, but now it's possible. We also had the request to ability to create groups in create the grade book. That feature is not, it's not in, in progress right now. About tests and quizzes features, we had some of them completed. The ability to export question pools, right now in progress, but almost completed. Dynamic rubrics is short answer questions. So you can create a rubric when you're creating the question, which is great. We also provide an integration with an open source safe exam browser to deliver and conduct exams in a safe environment and blocking many controls of the operating system. So this provides a great security capability to, to deliver exams to students and, and prevent cheating. We also have other features like we're going to build time and we're going to track the time and we're going to report the time spent on the exams and also on, on individual questions. So that's the idea of that feature. We're working on exporting the student submissions in PDF and completed. We have uh, previewed the calculating questions in question pools. That feature is completed. Uh, we also have the ability to define global variables in calculated question that was completed. We also can include internationalization uh, in the calculated questions and the feedback because it wasn't possible and we can we can do it. We improved the navigation between question pools when when selecting pools uh, in in quest in assessment parts. Uh, that's a great feature that saves time. We also have the ability in the submissions to invalidate questions that are not valid anymore, and the gate the grades gets recalculated. So if we want to delete a specific question, or we say we think that the question should be invalidated, we can, now we can do it and we can recalculate all the other submissions invalidating the question. We also improve the submission navigation. It's kind of consistent with, with the grader. So you can navigate between submissions easier and you can go to direct submissions without going to the previous page. And now, uh, still not still not developed. We're gonna provide time limit per question. The ability to define that the specific question has a limit of time and needs to be answered within the time. So there are more and more and more features for tests and quizzes. The ability to sort question pools, folders, and statistics. This is already implemented. Search and keywords at question pools, combination of random and selected questions from a question pool, random questions from multiple question pools. So right now you can only select one question pool, but you can, with this feature, we can select multiple question pools. We support basic HTML, the markup. So defining exams using markup, you can now use basic HTML. Um, we're going to work on improvements on the student feedback. And finally, already implemented, we made some changes in the event log. So now it's easier to navigate between events. Let me share the progress on private messages. All of them are completed now. Uh, the first one is, go is going to be convert a private message into a forum message. So imagine an instructor receives the same question many times he can convert the private message into a form message and it's going to be 
in a special forum called frequently asked questions. So the instructor can post a message and um, with with the with the question. Also, it includes tag support. So now private messages can define tags, and you can filter and search messages based on the tags. And finally, read receipt feature, which is when someone requests a confirmation. Then if the other part reads the message, the sender is going to receive a confirmation that the sender has received the message. I want to I want to share other, other features for other tools. I'm going to start with the latest one, the last one. We are supporting dates in groups. Joinable groups can now be open and closed by date. So students can join the group within the dates. So the groups have a time limitation, so they have a limited time to join the groups, which is great. Another feature is the wiki we provided group support. So now wiki pages can support groups and only the groups can see the pages. We also included a new event for resources when the user downloads then some content as a zip because that wasn't in the pan. That wasn't implemented, and people looks like people do this. Also, we implemented announcements for roles. So now, students, uh, instructors can create announcements for specific roles, announcements only for students, or announcements only for instructors, and the ability to highlight announcements where the announcements are displayed and um, with more prominent in the lists. And finally, we're working on a new let's say, conditional release service in the lessons um, to release items based on, on, on a condition. It says a grade, but it's not going to be a grade. It's going to be a condition. So basically, imagine that this specific item is going to be released if the user got a grade between 4 and 5 or 4 and 6. And we're going to implement and and or conditions, like this assignment and this assignment or this assessment, for example. So we're working on that. Um, we're gonna provide a better H5P integration. That work is in progress. We provide a new feature for the roster. We call it, I mean, the original name was the card game, but right now it's called Name That Face. Uh, is a game where displays random students and instructors need to guess the student name based on the photo. So the more students you complete, they disappear from the game because you know the, the instructor know them very well. But it's a game about, about, about engaging with the students and know them better based on the photos. Also, we improved the ability to export groups. So in the roster, there's some export options, and we included the option to export groups. We also provided a new tool for admins um, to perform multiple operations of a users. So right now in Sakai, you can enroll a user in sites, but you cannot enroll a user in multiple sites. So within this, with the new, this new tool, with this new tool, you can enroll multiple users in multiple sites. You can unenroll them, you can mark them as active and mark them as inactive. So it's basically that. Um, multiple operations on multiple sites and multiple users. And finally, what we've done with, with Microsoft. So first of all, uh, we provided a user and groups integration. So we mapped the concept of user and group in Microsoft and Sakai. So all the Sakai users are present. All the Microsoft users are present in Sakai, and at the same time, the groups are present in Sakai. And uh, there's a link between sites and teams, and there's a link between groups and channels. So we wanted to, to map these objects in order to get the objects from the Microsoft. So display Microsoft objects in Sakai. For example, in a site, display Teams objects, and inside the groups, display channel objects. So um, the users and groups integrations achieve this and get some up between the Microsoft tenant and the Sakai tenant. 
is also benefiting from this. We have the new, the meetings tool integrated with Microsoft Teams where the users can create meetings and access their recordings from Sakai. So of course you can do it using Teams, but in Sakai, you will have uh, several features like integrate with the calendar, integrate with the groups, assign a, a meeting to a specific group, and then get the recordings of the meeting directly without going to the Teams. We also integrated the streams, which are objects in OneDrive. So we improved the integration of documents and videos in Sakai. We have a new tool, which is the media gallery tool. And the media gallery displays, as I said, the videos of the sites, the teams and the channels. And the same for OneDrive. We have, say, we have site documents and group documents and user documents. And finally, the, we created a new tool to be able to edit its documents from Sakai. And that are stored in OneDrive. So all of these are right now in QA. All of these are, are part of, of the project, are present in the product, and are available for testing by institutions. So finally, I want to summarize the status of the project in July 2023. So we are in the, I think, in the middle of the time, but we completed most of the half of the project. So I think we are in a, good shape, in a great shape. Of course, we cannot relax because there's a lot of work to do. So right now, this is our status. We completed and verified more than the half of the, item, of the items. Um, completed, but in QA, we have the 10%. We have like the 8% of the items in progress. My team working on them and 26% of the items are in the list in the queue available for designing, analyzing, discussing, and implementing. So they are waiting for, for resources. As I said, most of them available now. Um, if anyone has or wants information about these specific features, there's the project in this Sakai community Jira instance. The browsers to you here. We also have a dedicated QA instance where you can test everything. Everything was developed against Sakai 22 and is going to be contributed to master, which is Sakai 24. So anyone can test the features in this instance. We have connected a Microsoft tenant with sample data. So this, this in Sakai instance is integrated with a sample Microsoft tenant. So we can test the user synchronization, the teams, the channels, the documents, the recordings, the video streams, etc. We refresh and update the data every week, and it's available for everybody. And it has the same credentials as the night release. So everyone's welcome to pilot the features. And this is of course uncertain because 2024 is going to happen next year, but we expect to have everything available for Sakai 22, 24, I'm sorry. We spare more, more funding. I mean, I hear, I hear news, nothing defined, but I hear news that some institutions may spend more, more funding. They start conversations around creating and delivering content. So many, many features and improvements around how it, how we grade and how we deliver the content. So we will keep the community posted every single week in our meetings. And finally, I don't know what time is it? Oh, five minutes. So any question is welcome and I'm happy to answer them. If you have any questions for Miguel, feel free to put them into the chat, or if you'd like to turn on your microphone and ask, you can do that as well. Um, we've got about five minutes for questions because this session is going to run till 11, and then our teaching showcase will start at 11.10, so that's a minor change in the schedule.
I'm seeing a lot of comments in the chat and people blown away by all the features. <laughs> so I think everyone's a little bit speechless. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a load of good stuff. Um, it's very exciting. Well, yeah, it, it was the opportunity we were waiting for, the project we were waiting for. I mean, after working you know, for 15 years in the community, having a project like involved seven, eight people developing and many, many, many structures and people from organizations collaborating. It's exciting, but at the same time, uh, it's challenging. I see a question from Dave Eveland. Does the test harness for Microsoft work for QA at the EDF test instance? What's the test harness? Um, I guess the test integration for Microsoft. No, I don't think so. The first time I heard that, I mean, I'm not super expert of Microsoft products because I come from the open source world. Is a new no, product I, to- I think the question is, is can you on the QA that you've got do the Microsoft stuff? And I thought you kind of said yes. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. We have a Microsoft tenant and every, every week the data is wiped and we do a clean synchronization. So there are some sites that are integrated with with the Microsoft tools. And of course, I'm happy to, to invite you to private, you know, meeting or private session with my team with Paco, because I'm sure he's he will be happy to show all of this. Thank you, David. Yep. That's the Q instance. So I have a question if no one else does. How hard is it to read the Microsoft documentation when you're doing all this work? I mean, do you, when you're working on the Microsoft integrations, do you just go to a page and read some stuff and write some code and it works? Or do you just like stay up till two o'clock in the morning, throwing stuff at the wall, cursing their documentation? And uh, I mean, is it, how hard was the Microsoft side of this? It is hard. It is hard. I assigned my most experienced developer and he's dedicated to the Microsoft integrations um, full time. And sometimes the documentation says something and it's a different story. And of course, most of the, the API is fine, but sometimes um, some things are not supported. So for example, in the case of the meetings, there's no real API to get the recordings. So basically Paco had access to the channels and the teams and he scanned the content of the channels and the teams and he got the, the, the meetings links. So it works, it works amazing, but it's not something that you consume from the API. It's just, you know. <laughs> that, that doesn't so, surprise me. I've done the same thing with Google APIs and you know, you, you get a, halfway there from their documentation and the rest of the way there from Stack Overflow and 50 other things that finally figured it out. That tells me ultimately that there is a lot of valuable intellectual property in the source code that's in your branch that will be in master that is a reference implementation of how to talk to Microsoft, right? I mean, forget that it's Sakai. I mean, you have, you have puzzled through how to make Microsoft do what you want it to do. And it's not entirely obvious um, to the average person just how to do that from the documentation. And so that struggle I think is valuable on its own, in its own right. The fact that you've got a reference implementation that successfully talks. So that just, Correct. congratulations. I figured that was hard and you said it was Thank hard. You. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell Paco congratulations because he's the author of all of these and all of these ideas. So basically, as I said, uh, for example, the streaming, the streaming service, Microsoft, is based on OneDrive. It's not a specific streaming portal or U Microsoft YouTube. So basically, he provided a tool similar to YouTube or similar to other tools like Altura. And he's filtering the OneDrive resources based on the video. And he's displaying a portal like the YouTube. So he's basically helping instructors because I want to show my videos on the sites. I just need to upload them to this space in OneDrive. If I upload to the team, OneLive or the channel, then the videos are going to be displayed as a YouTube. 
So it's easy to use, but as I said, there's no specific API that says, give me all the streams, give me, you know. So it's the kind of work we've done. Uh, provide a lot of, you know, helpers and facilitate to consume the Microsoft objects within Sakai so you can use whatever environment because you can't, you can just um, deny that now our instructors and our students spend a lot of time on Microsoft. So we want to spend their time and consume from Sakai. That's the thing. And as you said, I don't think there's a product, and, and I know other products in the market that have this level of integration, you know, with the tools. All right. Well, thank you so much, Miguel, and all of your group and all of the universities who helped sponsor this work. Um, it's definitely a, a lot of very, uh, very cool enhancements we can look forward to in Sakai 24 or sooner if we want to pick them up um, before then. So um, thanks again for uh, updating us on all of this. And if you're interested to hear a little bit more, um, you know, Periodically, Miguel usually attends uh, the teaching and learning call when we meet. So um, a lot of times he'll give a quick update on the, the current state of the features that they're um, working on. So feel free to drop in on one of those calls if you um, are interested in um, learning a little bit more. So, all right, well, we are out of time. Um, as I said, we're backed up slightly because I goofed on the time, but we're going to start the teaching showcase at 1110. So you do have a bit of a breather in between now and the start of that session. So I will see you guys over there in um, about seven minutes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.